Frank Sassy, um, how loud can it be for this one? What do you think? I, it's really short. Oh, but can we have the music going on and everything? Just the balloon the Um, give me like 10 minutes. <gasps> oh, we're live. <laughs> hey, welcome to this hot mess, amazing nips. Okay, friends, I have a question for you. Do you wonder if you use the wrong hashtags? We are going to have a conversation about what that looks like and how we can change it. So we should probably set the record very straight with this flash fire conversation around hashtags and what you can use to grow your business. Starting with first things first, hashtags are best for discoverability, not engagement. So just because somebody finds your post by way of a hashtag, when we talk about hashtags, we're talking about Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I know Facebook has hashtags, but they don't really function the way that hashtags do for searchability on other platforms. So let's focus on those three platforms. We'll go back to the idea and reinforce that hashtags are for discoverability, not engagement. Just because somebody discovers your account on a social platform, it doesn't mean that they will necessarily engage. Engage. Does, just because they find your post, it doesn't mean that they're going to like it, comment it, save it, or share it with a friend. I like to explain hashtags as the following. Let's pretend you and I are sitting on a crowded bus, and we're going to call this the Instagram bus and we stop and somebody walks in the bus and he is wearing a bright neon sign. This neon sign caught our attention. We discovered a new passenger on the bus because he was wearing a neon sign. Oh, we noticed him. Now, the thing that we have to think about is just because we notice him doesn't mean that we're gonna strike up a conversation. Like, hey, how's it going? How are you? Now you have to remember that your captions, your captions on any social platform from YouTube and Facebook all the way down to Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, your captions, please note, are the same as conversations. What you have to realize is that when you start a conversation with somebody in real life, it is just the same as our homeboy walking in on the bus wearing a neon sign and he looks at you and says, what's up? And then you say, what's up? What happens is we have to understand how did we start the conversation? So using this example, let's use the hashtag NFL football. Let's say our homeboy that walked into the Instagram bus was wearing a neon sign that said hashtag NFL. Now he might have a conversation with me and say, oh, what's up? And then I say, what's up? I discovered you by your neon sign, AKA hashtag and he just starts talking about the NFL season and training and things to be considered. And I'm like, cool, not my cup of tea. Now he might go to you and say, hey, what's up? And then you say, hey, what's up? And he starts talking about the game stats, how things are, and you're like, I like this cat, he's cool. Just because we discovered his account does not mean we will both engage with it. That's why we go back to the notion that hashtags are best for discoverability, not engagement. It means that they don't guarantee engagement. So how do you actually guarantee engagement? Well, friends, it's vital for your photo, caption, and hashtags to work all together. Just because you have a really popular hashtag, it does not mean that people are going to guarantee talk back to you. So if you're like, okay, Jasmine, this is making sense. Like, how do I measure hashtags? How do I go through all these things? What are the things I think about? Well, I'm here to answer questions. We actually went through this exact topic on the inside of Social Curator. What, what is a hashtag strategy and how to develop one that is yours and impervious to you questioning yourself. We are not open for Social Curator. It's not a pitch, but y'all, we have free resources. Jasminestar.com forward slash resources so that you can sign up and get tips and tricks on your captions, photos, we have story templates. This is where we're gonna go deep and we dive into what does it look like to show up with a strategy. Now, every week I come on, I answer some questions, so let's get this party started. Uh, shout out to Mandy McQueen. For those of us who are multi-passionate, how would you recommend setting up your business? One larger personal brand with bits of what you do or separate smaller business pages? That was upvoted, if y'all noticed, 10 times. The way that we do these conversations is a purely democratic. 
the most popular question wins. So we're gonna talk about if you're multi-passionate. So let's say for the sake of this example, let's say you really love photography and you really love talking about mom life and you really like helping entrepreneurs. Those are three different things. What Mandy's asking is, I like to do a lot of stuff. Should I build out a personal brand with elements of the things that I like to talk about? Or should I build out a separate Instagram account for photography and a separate Instagram account for mom life and a separate Instagram account for teaching entrepreneurs? And the answer is, dun, 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 there is no right answer. You get to choose what is best for you. Now, my personal opinion, which means jack squat, is if I was in Mandy's situation, I was multi-passionate and I like to do a lot of different things, just for the sake of me understanding what does my audience wanna see is I would build one account. Now remember, I don't have a business yet. I am not monetizing. I read Mandy being multi-passionate means that she likes to do a lot of stuff, but she doesn't necessarily have a lot of businesses built in. If then that is the case, if I like to do three big things and I'm like, I can't decide, no one's holding a gun to your head. So what I want you to do, which what I would suggest, but again, means nothing, one account highlighting mom life. You know, there's a post that talks about mom life and then there's a post that talks about entrepreneurs. There's a post that talks about photography. You're sharing your content and then you're seeing, huh, what are people resonating with? Like, what are people liking? Like, how are people responding? Your audience will speak to you and help guide you to what you are uniquely qualified to share. On the Inside of Social Curator, we talk about um, having set categories when you approach with a strategy to grow your business. So if I was multi-passionate and I was inside a social curator, I would choose not seven to nine categories and like maybe two would be about mom life, two would be about entrepreneur life, two would be around um, photography and I would rotate those so that my audience become very accustomed to my pillars of content and they become used to me and then they're like you know what I really just want to hear more about photography and then all of a sudden the stuff you're so inspired to shoot and talk about and share all of a sudden that's the thing that people want to know about then that guides your content and at that time you could separate accounts if you feel it necessary let's get into a live question shout out to tammy who's sending these live questions my way i appreciate you boo um andrea says hi jasmine what program do you use to go live like this and also go back and forth on your screen it is called wirecast okay let's get into caesar balboa hi jasmine did you stop using hashtags on instagram is it better to put hashtags on the comments or in the actual post that was upvoted four times. Caesar, congratulations on having the second most popular question. I have another answer for you. Are you ready for it? Dun, da, 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 da. There is no right answer. And I, just in case you're wondering or you're new here, that dun, da, 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 always precedes the way that I answered that there is no right answer. There, uh, Instagram does not play or favor a certain set. You can keep your hashtags in the post or you can keep your hashtags in the comment. A word of advice. I have a tendency to prefer to put hashtags in a comment so that it doesn't make the caption look really long and heavy. But if I want to point people to something, so do you guys remember back in the day when we used to have live events and conferences? Miss those days. If I was at a conference, the last live conference I spoke at was Social Media Marketing World. As I was at Social Media Marketing World, I added the hashtag social media marketing world 2020 or something like that because I wanted people in my post to go directly to that hashtag so that they would be able to find where I'm speaking and the meet and greet and things of that nature. Okay, so if you guys have live questions, please feel free to leave them here. Let's go into Kaylee. Kaylee says, can we chat about algorithm changes? I'm seeing record lows with engagement and growth. Has something changed or am I not just hitting my demographic? So Kaylee and anybody else, actually, that's the question of the day. Have you seen a drop of engagement on Instagram? Yes or no? You can leave that here in the chat because what I want people to see is what is the abundance of responses so people can see either, huh, maybe I'm not missing my, maybe I am missing my demographic or maybe this is affecting everybody in the same way. Yes or no? Is the algorithm changing your engagement in your organic reach? The answer is, there's a good chance that you're still doing things really amazingly well. However, there are more people going on Instagram. So you wanna think of Instagram like a highway. It's like an eight lane, eight lane highway. There was a time where it was just like you and like two other cars. If you've been on Instagram for a while, like more than a year, it was like you and two other cars on an eight lane highway. That means you could speed and people can see your car. Nowadays, Instagram is 
billions of people on billions of people on the platform, which means there's more cars on the freeway. So you can't go as fast. And if somebody had to pick out your car, it's much harder to pick out your car in a sea of cars because there's so many people on the freeway. So what does this actually mean? It means that you still have to show up and do the work, but Instagram, just like Facebook, because Instagram was bought by Facebook, they're going to, at some point, when they have so many people posting, it's not going to be at all ever the same amount of organic reach. If you want to get a lot of people seeing your post, if not now, then definitely in the future, you're going to have to pay for that exposure, which is why so many people are big advocates for joining new social platforms so they can get that organic reach, so they can get that attention that they used to be so accustomed to on Instagram. That's why you will see a lot of people, myself included, jumping on platforms like TikTok. Because TikTok, even though there's not as many people on TikTok than there is on Instagram, you get the old school organic reach that we used to get on Facebook, that we used to get on Instagram. Uh, Vivian V asks, would you, post, would you post on Reel or TikTok or both? I would, to the best of your ability, post on both. Now, the main difference is that on TikTok, you can have a TikTok video go up to 30 seconds and on Instagram Reels, at this point in time of this recording, you can only go up to 15 seconds. So if you want it to be strategic, you would create one 15 second video that you can upload to Instagram Reels and you can add text and use the tools and then you would get that same video and upload it to TikTok, but I would recommend using TikTok, some of their functionality, some of like adding text or adding music there because I think it's gonna be a game changer and the algorithm responds favorably when you're using native platforms. Um, let's see, Whitney asked, do Reels register hashtags? You have to use hashtags um, as part of the post. So when you post a Reel, and you share it to your feed, the hashtags will appear in the actual post. And if you go to your Instagram discover tab, you will likely, if you're using hashtags, have the possibility of getting discovered uh, within that. Christina asked, do hashtags work on Facebook? Well, you could use hashtags on Facebook, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're effective. So. Instagram started off with hashtags. Twitter started off with hashtags. Hashtags are search mechanisms for each social platform. Facebook did not start with hashtags. They tried adding hashtags, but for some reason on Facebook, they're just so wonky that you could click on the hashtag and it might send you down a little bit of a rabbit hole to search, but it doesn't do a great job at aggregating really viable, important posts that you're searching for. Um, okay. Uh, Yana asked, IG Reels, should they be shared to stories? I blame that for my drop in story views. Listen, at the time of this recording, Reels have been around less than a month. So I am absolutely, you saw me do this yesterday on Instagram. I will create a Reel, I will post it on my feed, and then I'll also share it to Instagram stories just in case people aren't actually seeing my feed at that time. All right, friends, family, saints, ain'ts, mm, appreciate you guys being here. Every week I come on live Facebook, we have live chats, we get into conversations. I wanna show up until I blow up and have you do the dame dang thing. Friends, be sure to snag those resources, jasminestar.com forward slash resources. You get caption templates, you get photos, you get story templates. All of these things are here to prepare and ensure you show up every day on social media. Love your guts, friends. Have a great one. Bye.